A growing number of women in Iran are taking to the streets to protest against mandatory headscarves. They are publicly removing their hijabs, trying, tying them on sticks, and waving them in public. The movement was inspired by a 31-year-old woman who was arrested in December. She is now dubbed the Girl of Revolution Street. It wasn't long after images of other women imitating her flooded social media. After the revolution in 1979, the government made it illegal for women to show their hair. And they cannot wear clothes that show off their figures. Joining me live is Masi Alinejad from New York. Masi is a journalist, an activist, and the founder of the White Wednesday campaign where women post pictures and videos of themselves wearing white headscarves and clothes to protest dress code laws in Iran. Welcome to you, Masi. Thank you so much for having me. Let, me. let me ask you, first of all, we just heard a little bit about how women are expected to dress in Iran. Uh, it, what is the dress code? For women from the age of seven, uh, we had to follow compulsory hijab uh, laws inside Iran. It means from the age of seven, if you don't wear headscarf, you don't wear hijab, then you won't be able to get an education. You won't be able to get a job. You won't be able actually to live in your own country. And then there are so many punishments for women if they don't wear hijab or they wear inappropriate hijab, what they call it, then you get fined, you get arrested, you get lashes, and you get into jail. So that is why now women of Iran protesting against compulsory job because to them it's about, you know, it's, it's the most visible symbol of oppression against women. Okay, and there are no rules for how men dress. There are some rules about men, but it's more restrict about women. And actually, I have to say that the government of Iran using men to oppress women, because they say if you don't wear a hijab or you don't cover your head, your hair, then men cannot control themselves. Men can get excited. This is an insult to men as well. In our campaign and our movement against compulsory job, now men joining us to say that we don't own the women. We are just supporting them. We are fighting for freedom of choice all together because they want to show that the men in Iran are not thinking exactly, uh, you know, the same as the government of Iran. Okay, Masi, you posted this video of the protests on your social media. I'm going to show it to our audience now, and I'll get you to explain it later. از اون دختر خانم نازنینی که یکی و تنها پرچم سفید حق و بالا گرفته بود در میدون انقلاب از خونه تا محل کارم که الان دارم میرم سلام مسیح جان میخواستم ازت تشکر کنم توی مدت خیلی زحمت کشیدی پشت کار داشتی برای کمپین چهارشنبه های سفید که صدای ما رو به گوش همه دنیا برسونی خب ما زنان باهات همکاری کردیم برای عکس و فیلم دادیم و پشت بای سادیم و الان بیشتر جاهای دنیا بیشتر کانال های دنیا ما رو Alright Masi, what, do we, what, do, what were we witnessing there? It feels like history. You know, it is really, really important to understand that these women, you show their videos, they are not fighting against a piece of cloth. They are fighting for their own dignity. They're fighting for their identity. By identity, I mean from the age of seven, the government of Iran forcing you to, to carry a fake identity, to be someone else. And for, more, for almost uh, four decades, for 40 years, women of Iran were objecting against compulsory job. But now this is the first time, actually, after oppressing the big demonstration in Iran after the revolution, this is the first time that 
women taking the street and putting themselves in danger. You know, they know this is a punishable crime. They want to be heard. And the, 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 the movement now, the unrest, gaining momentum. Why? Because people, men, women, the, even those women who believe in hijab, they're joining the campaign. They are fed up with religious, you know, religion, religion interfering in our, in our personal life. And I'm going to tell you right now, Nargis uh, Hosseini, the second girl, is in prison. And you know what was his, her crime? Just, you know, waving a white headscarf. Uh, putting the white headscarf on, on a stick and waving it in public. Because the government of Iran think if they arrest her, then they can stop women from protesting against compulsory hijab. But it is, it is not true. It is not right. And women now taking the street from different cities and different towns because they are trying to say that this is, this is 21st century and this is ugly and backward law. You're telling women how to behave and what to wear. Okay, what's been the reaction of the general public? You know, for, the most important thing is that the government of Iran calling us prostitute. You know, you won't believe me that they call us, um, you know, uh, corrupted women. They call even me ugly duckling. They call me the agent of CIA, MI6. But the thing is, these are the women inside Iran leading the campaign. This, these women exist in Iran, but their existence have been ignored for years and years. When you turn on the TV, all you see is just women in hijab. But Iran should be for all all Iranian. And, and now women, I just received a video from a woman who were, you know, having a black uh, hijab, long chador, but holding a white headscarf in public and saying that, you know, I believe in hijab, but I hate forcing other women to wear my dress. So this is the true face of Iranian. Iranian government trying to show the rest of the world mm. that this is our culture. This is the way that they actually are forcing female politicians, you know, all the non-Iranian tourists, non-Muslim women to wear hijab, saying that this is our culture. But this is a big lie. Compulsion cannot be part of our culture. They say that you have to respect this because it, this is a law. Mm. You know, slavery used to be legal. They ask all the female politicians who go to my beautiful country, keep silent because this is a law. You know, uh, Burkini ban was a law in France as well. Slavery was, used to be legal as well. Uh, travel ban in, in America. You know, all people around the world, they condemn it. A bad law should be broken to make it a respectable but, law. But is the government, have they only arrested the one woman or are they arresting all the women? No, they arrested two women who waved their white headscarf in public. But let me tell you, within a year, According to the police of Iran, 3.6 million women were arrested, warned, and punished in public. Why? Because they were not wearing a proper Islamic hijab. In eight months, there were 40,000 cars were impounded. Why? Because women were driving unveiled. So this is the violence, this is the laws, the, the Sharia laws actually giving the government of Iran the power to um, punish the women of Iran who took more than 60 percentage of university. All I'm trying to say that these women in Iran, they are brave. They do not want to be victimized. They are brave enough to, to fight for their own right, but all they want right now to be recognized by the rest of the world, to be heard by the government of Iran, and to understand that they have to end up, you know, uh, counting these women like second mm. citizen uh, class in, is, in, inside is Iran. Is there anyone in the government who's giving them any support at all, or is this going to end up being a war between the government and the women of Iran? That, that's a good question. You know, during, during the uh, election, um, the, all doors, the embassy's door outside Iran were open to women to go and vote for uh, you know the presidential presidential candidate without headscarf you know women were free to vote without headscarf oh. all the door of his stadiums inside iran were open towards women but after the election the door are closed i went to the uh, you know um, uh, the the embassy outside iran they didn't let me in after the election why because i was unveiled so i have to say that all the government whether they're reformist or they're conservative or fundamentalist, doesn't matter. When it comes to women's rights, they all think the same. That is why these women in Iran, they're not waiting for the hijab laws to be removed. 
they remove it themselves. They're practicing this, their civil disobedience. They know that they're putting themselves in danger, but being a woman means that you live in a dangerous situation. Mm. From the age of seven, you're not allowed to be your true self. You're not allowed to sing solo. You're not allowed to dance. You're not allowed to enter a stadium. You're not allowed to be a judge. You're not even allowed to get an education without getting permission from your, your father or your husband. So these are all coming from Sharia laws. But when we talk about it loud, people say that, shh, you know, you're causing Islamophobia. But let me tell you, I am not against Islam, but all the Islamic laws in Iran are against women. And these women now are brave enough to tell that we are not scared of anything. For more than, for, as I said that, for four decades, we, the women, had the fear inside in our heart. But now, this is the government of Iran have the fear, and they are scared of these brave women inside Iran. What do you think the world, people like Justin Trudeau and, and Canadians should do? That's a good question. You know, what breaks my heart is just the hypocrisy of all those uh, feminists outside Iran. Let me tell, give you just one example. Now, a Barbie girl wearing hijab can make a news for CNN, for, you know, for, for all media. But millions of girls from the age of seven who, be, who will be kicked out from, from school by not wearing, because of not wearing hijab, they cannot be news. I'm not against hijab. My mother wears hijab. My sister wears hijab. But I'm against hypocrisy. When it comes to, uh, you know, condemning compulsory hijab, they all these feminists keep they, they keep silence because they worry about Islamophobia. I grew up in a poor family. Always when I was talking about my rights, they were like saying, shh, you know, you're poor and you have to think about job and bread. And after the revolution, they said, this is the revolution. Let's think about bigger problems. Shh. And then we had war between Iran and Iraq. They, my, two of my brother got injured. So then the, I remember when we were talking about women's rights, they were saying, shh because of the war, there are so many bigger problems. Mm. After the sanction, they said, you know, they, the Western country might take, might take advantage. Shh, keep silent. Every time. But now when we want to talk about a right in the West, they say, shh, Donald Trump might take advantage. But I was loud to condemn travel ban. Mm. I myself is a victim of travel ban. But I don't understand why I can easily, you know, protest visa ban here. I can condemn Burkini ban, but nobody joined me to condemn compulsory hijab. The, femin the feminist, Swedish feminist, Swedish government, they went to my country. All of them obeyed compulsory hijab without challenging it. You know what happened? The government of Iran using that because by obeying compulsory hijab, you're empowering the government of Iran to put more pressure on these women inside Iran. And I'm going to tell you the last thing. Nargis Mohammadi, she is a well-known women's rights activist who condemned compulsory hijab as well. She met with Catherine Ashton, the high representative of European Union. Now she has been sentenced to be in prison for 16 years. All of them kept silent. Why? There are a lot of, you know, women's rights activists mm. who were like the, the Atena Daimi is in prison. Mm. So they dare enough to condemn compulsory hijab from the prison, but when the German female politician or Federico Mogherini, they go to my country, they keep silent. So they what say do that you... Because we have to respect the law. What do you want... I, I ask you again, and uh, what do you want uh, other government officials, other people to do? I don't want any uh, politicians or feminists from outside Iran to come and save Iranian women because they are brave enough and they can stand up for their own right. right. All I want, do not, do not legitimize compulsory hijab laws. Do not ignore these women who are fighting against compulsory hijab and do not ask them to keep silence. So you have to ask all the Muslim women to join this campaign and condemn compulsory hijab. If you really care about Islamophobia, I have to say that these all Sharia laws in Iran, which women are putting themselves in danger and fighting against it, causing Islamophobia. Justin Trudeau, if you're a true feminist, you have to stand up, you have to, you know, understand that these women inside Iran, they have to be recognized as well. When we talk about compulsory hijab, this is not an internal matter because the government of Iran forcing all non-Iranian 
all female pol politicians, all the Canadian tourists, all the non, you know, Iranian uh, tourists inside Iran to wear hijab. So it's about all okay. women. It's not an internal matter. It's a global issue. And all women, all families should okay. stick together and condemn any discriminatory law which is happening right now in the Middle East, all right. uh, especially in Islamic Republic of Iran. Masih Alinejad, thank you so much for joining us, me tonight. Interesting conversation. Thank you so much for having me.